podcast that is like balderdash except not i'm chris jazz sequence on the internet that is gary which is binary gary on the internet and that's allison who is allison plus on the internet and we are collectively binary jazz on the internet did you say who you are on the internet yes you did okay yes you were distracted looking for squirrels geese. got it go ahead yeah it's fine um and gary is a uh a squirrel inspector um that's why he's so concerned about the squirrels behind him and uh allison is the uh chief ambassador uh canadian ambassador to, ambassador to south guinea Ooh. uh yeah that's why she travels a lot <laughs> Nice. And today, and, and so if you're new to the show, uh, which we hope you aren't, uh, this is Where episode, yeah, exactly. This is episode 10,010. Um, and of course we're uh, doing, we're calculating this in binary. So we haven't actually recorded 10,000 shows. We've just recorded one zero zero. It feels like just shows. yesterday though was 10,001, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so we, yeah, uh, so we uh, whoa, wake up. Whoa, wake up. Um, um, yeah, so the show is, yes, uh, the show is uh, Allison comes up with Allison a topic, with a topic and, and we have to, we have to figure, figure out how to talk topic. about the topic without knowing what the topic is before uh, Allison tells us what the topic is. And then at the end, we, ask, we answer questions that have been submitted by listeners, uh, of which we have at least one left. Listener or question? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I, both. I mean, we always, our, our, least, we always have at least one listener. More. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Our, our first That's listener. True. <laughs> listener number one. Yeah. <laughs> listener number one who is, is so vital to the show that she became part of the show. <laughs> is, is there like a membership card that comes with being listener number one? Like, do you have like a... <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that'll be my next side project, my... A DIY craft project for the afternoon is president of the binary jazz fan club. <laughs> I'm a sucker for an ID card that has a sepia photo. We all know that. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Anything that I can dress up as Kermit San Diego, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> um, my driver's license. <laughs> are you wearing a hat? Are you wearing the hat? No. Oh. They don't let you wear hats in your photo, do they? Well, I don't. I mean, you're. But in Canada, it seems like they would be much more permissive to that kind of thing. <laughs> like little Mardi Gras masks, and who knows, just <laughs> whatever yeah. you look like when you're driving. It's it's just anarchy in Canada. I mean, you know. I don't think it's anarchy at all in Canada. I mean, I think the craziest thing that happened in Canada has to be the uh, the maple syrup heist, heist from, That's which true. is a fantastic story. I, there was like an episode of Netflix um, of some series about bad business decisions or something but it was it was really enthralling so i feel like that's like the pinnacle of crime in canada and that being the case <laughs> ids don't need to be as strict as they are in the u.s i mean in the u.s for crying out loud you have to use your id to vote right so i mean i, I had to use my id to vote as well i voted a few weeks ago <laughs> really yeah hmm. we had a um an election here in ontario that Oh yeah. Did not turn out so well, depending on who you are. But for me, it did not turn out as I would like to. Um, the, I think I it's good for the, co the cocaine dealers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, depending on where you fall in the Ford family, um, but I was not pleased. Here's an ignorant question. Is, is that Ford related to the Fords of Detroit? I don't Do believe know? so. It seems like proximity. I mean, I mean, they're probably all related in some deep, 
deep rooted capacity, but I don't think there's immediate relation. I feel like they would have tried to capitalize on that. And uh, that would definitely be at the forefront of their publicity if that was okay. Case. Yeah, that's probably a valid point. I feel like they capitalize on so, so smaller things. So I feel like they would have left on that from the get go. Sure. Sure, sure. Well, the Ford family. Anyway, on to better and happier topics. <laughs> Um, the topic for this week, which you might know, it occurred to me this morning, uh, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, we'll see how long you can talk about it, even if you do know it, is um, Dyson Sphere. Dyson Sphere. Mm -hmm. Two words, Dyson and Sphere. <laughs> is that the vacuum cleaner? No. Uh, <laughs> obviously, vacuum cleaner. obviously, it's a sphere of hot dog meat. No, it's no the Dyson sphere. It's the one that has it's the purple one with the ball in the middle, and it sucks up animal hair. That's the Dyson <laughs> sphere. The purple one with the ball in the middle. You know the Dyson vacuum cleaners. It yeah, sounds it's like a, a hamster, like a the, the, one of the. No, no, no. It's like a big. It's, like it's, it's, yeah, and the and the the filter, the way it works is, it creates the vortexes, vortices, vortexes. I don't know. Um, yes. Yeah. And, and conceptually, like, it uses the same concept as a tornado. So you have the, a bunch of vortexes spinning on vortexes that create major suction. And the, I don't know, roll the ball plays, or the sphere, in this case. You know, yesterday we were talking about blenders. That's how my blender works, by creating a vortex. That's how this... Dyson, Dyson doesn't make blenders, do they? No. But I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it back into, pulling it back into blenders because, you know, we're blender people. Yeah. As as pointed out by the last episode, yeah, two thirds of us are blender people. Yeah, right. We'll get you. you trust me. Once once you invest in a good blender, you don't stop blending. It's funny because um, I'm partially the reason why uh, I am a blender person and have a blend tech specifically is because um, the dude from the Will It Blend videos. And if you don't know what Will It Blend is, then you should go look stop at them listening. Now. <laughs> Stop go listening. Watch. Go watch yeah. now. Um, blend dangerous he, things, yeah. he came to our WordCamp uh, many years ago because uh, Bluntech's website was um, built on WordPress, and uh, Velda, uh, who now works for Automatic, was the person is in our community and, and was the person who built the site. Um, so she brought him in, and he told the story of Bluntech and how they um, how they became a thing, and how Will It Blend became a thing. Um, and, and really it was like, they have this amazing, very technically superior product that because they're all scientists and engineers was not selling at all. And as a sort of last ditch effort, some dude is like, well, why don't you just get a blender and just throw some crap in it and we'll put it on YouTube and maybe a few people will see it and maybe we'll sell some units. And that became the start of the viral videos of, of Will It Blend. And uh, that is what made their business successful. Um, yeah. And that's why and I have worked. a blend. It works because you also bought a blend. Yes, it did. And I did. Um, and so what's unique about what? their design is that they don't, they don't focus many blenders, most blenders even, focus on having really sharp blades so it can slice through uh, whatever it's blending. Blendtec doesn't worry about that. Their blades are very, very dull, and they, they focus on making the, uh, the blades go really, really fast um, so that it just tears it apart. And then the shape of the uh, jar um, creates a vortex to suck the the stuff down into the middle to m make it uh, hit the hit the blades, and and I know that you wanted to hear that because you were talking about vortices uh, in your Dyson I, uh, I sphere like, vacuum cleaner. But don't all blenders uh, create a vortex? Your, your body. Yeah, but some of them don't do it very well. Some of them don't do it very. Some of them don't do it very well, and um and like. One of the problems that a lot of blenders, uh, lesser blenders have is it'll create the vortex, but then you'll have this thing where uh, it'll sort of suck things down, but you have this layer on top where it's not getting blended at all. Um, and so the design of the jar is meant to reduce that, to sort of have it, because they have it but I feel a square like that's... jar. <sighs> yeah, I feel like the, the 
less sharp blades and speed is is a lot of marketing mumbo jumbo and not so much science. So now I'm hearing the second hand from you, right? Because I think every <laughs> blender, you know, can have dull blades and spin faster or slower. So I don't know. You as a representative of blend tech have not sold me, Chris. Well, I admit I'm probably not. Though the counter is pretty cool. I, yeah. I, I, do, I do like the counter concept. I wish all my um, appliances had a counter. <laughs> That's true. You know? Like, yeah. I mean, how often do you open your laptop? Like, ching, you know, like it'd be nice <laughs> to know. Or I don't know if it'd be nice to know. That'd be interesting to know that. You've opened this laptop 87,000 times. Yeah, it could be yeah. a very somber reminder. <laughs> well, the um, the battery monitor in um, battery monitor stuff uh, in OS X is really specific about how often you've fully charged and discharged and, you know, um, capability. And heck, even um, the new iOS 12, the like how many times you pick up your phone and turn it on, like they track that. Like it's not, it, it's trackable in the interest of helping you, you, you use your phone less. But um, I think they call it screen time. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a, I don't know. Otherwise I like iOS 12 outside of that thing. I don't really know what it does. Um, Dyson Sphere. I actually feel like I, I mean, this is a phrase that I am familiar with. I just don't remember what it is. So, and, and I'm, I'm fighting the urge to Google it. Because when I have that nagging feeling that I know what the thing is, but or I, that sounds familiar and I know what it is, but I don't know what it is, and I want to Google it, like like that like that feeling of like, hey, there's that actor that was in that movie, and like, oh, what's their name, and uh, I need to look it up now. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it is it the thing you get like see at science centers where like the the like electricity comes to the edge when you put your fingers on there? No, that's a uh, okay. Um, Something else. <laughs> <laughs> trying to describe the thing with the like. If you came to be educated, I came to the wrong podcast. <laughs> I, I wanted to say Jacob's ladder, but it's not Jacob's ladder. It's something else. No. Um, that'll be that'll be next week's topic. <laughs> yeah. So I think that the Dyson sphere. Well, sphere's an easy part, isn't it, Chris? We've got that on lockdown. <laughs> And Dyson Feel is good obviously the name of the person who invented this particular sphere. Yes, I still like. For, I still for like viewers the, at home. Sphere. <laughs> viewers. For viewers at home that are actually watching on YouTube, that is what the sphere is. Yes, but yeah. Um, for for viewers or listeners at home that are just listening to the podcast, Gary held up a small ball. Um. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a golf ball, a practice golf ball. How, why is it a practice golf ball versus a real golf ball? Because it, it has holes in it, so it's uh -oh. it's flimsy plastic. You can't. Really it's a wiffle far. ball. I ended up buying fifty of these silly balls on Amazon. I bought twenty five, and they were never delivered. So I reported like the package missing, and Amazon was like, "Well, we'll send you more." So <laughs> then the next day, I got the first package that were yellow, twenty five of them, and then a day later, I got my my twenty five blue ones. Um, so what happens is the kids and I play with them in the backyard and often they end up on top of the, um, the porch. And then when it rains, then the rain like washes them down and out the gutters. So underneath the, the downspouts, <laughs> after a good rain, there's like 30 or so little plastic golf balls. And then we can play again until we hit them all back on the roof. That's and then we have to wait for the rain. I mean, I guess I could probably like spray a hose up there, but half the fun is like, well, they're all in storage now. Yeah. <laughs> so Game, Game's over until it rains. The best part is that when I got the first box, my son That's was good sitting on the couch, and uh, I'm like, oh, look at this. This is so cool. And I walked up and accidentally like spilled 25 plastic <laughs> golf balls on it. <laughs> it was great. He's like, oh, man. And I thought that was really entertaining. So the next day when the next box came, I'm like, oh, look. <laughs> he went, oh, man, not again. <laughs> I love that that was like a thing that, I mean, and I don't, I guess I got all 25. I didn't find any under furniture, but there's probably still some hanging around the house. You know, when you have 50 plastic golf balls, you don't keep inventory. You just, whatever. There's a bunch of them. A couple have been hit by the lawnmower. Several are like in the deep weeds back there that I can't get to. You know, when I find them in pieces or smashed, I throw them away, but you know, they're just cheap, the stupid toy. Yeah. The squirrels are probably collecting them and storing them away for winter. Boy, that experience is cool. The whole cheeks <laughs> that with a golf ball in it. I guess you don't really, your, your squirrels are kind of like year round. They're not really like. They, don't they probably have like. 
Yeah, it's probably like a good week that they need to have storage of food, you know, if things aren't growing. Maybe the, golf balls won't, <laughs> the golf balls won't benefit them unless they're like playing fetch with them. That's <laughs> yeah. The you need to teach your squirrels how to play fetch with some like peanut butter and some golf ball. That's the secret. There are, I've known people in Florida that have like befriended squirrels and when they come out in their backyard, squirrels will run to them like, like a pet and will climb on them and play with them and stuff. Um, yeah, right? I mean, that seems a little weird to me, but I mean, more than one person I know of that was like, oh yeah, when I was a kid, we would go out there and feed them and then they would climb on us. And so they got used to when we come outside, they just come and like run up our leg waiting for a snack. I don't know if I want a squirrel running up my leg. No. I feel like squirrels are like furry pigeons, that they are carriers of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, plastic golf balls sometimes of the year. Yeah. I also, I've had several, um, several um, Puerto Rican friends and they're always like, what is that thing? It's a squirrel. We don't have those in Puerto Rico. So it's, that's always fun to like, you know, explore squirrels. Are all your squirrels like gray and brown? Or do you have white um, squirrels? No, I mean, I, I don't I think I've seen a white one. They're mostly grayish. They're not really few, cute. In Toronto, there's a few albino ones that are running around and that people always get very excited when they spot them. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. If I saw an albino squirrel in my backyard right now, I'd be totally distracted and super excited. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I get that. I'm on board. Yeah, I like. I do like to picture you like just leaving the screen and like. <laughs> I, I gotta go. Dropping in the back. Of stand <laughs> I um, I was I was in um, a, a company a team chat a couple of days ago, and a small go for toys. I actually think I uploaded it, the go for toys video. Um, for us in the backyard, and I was. We were discussing something. I'm like, I gotta go uh, baby tortoise, and just disappeared for ten minutes ago. <laughs> like, shoot video of this tortoise and um, get the photo with my kids with the tortoise. It's, it's exciting. We haven't had baby tortoises uh, for several years. I think I accidentally killed one um, a couple summers ago. Um, they burrow, and when they burrow, they dig super deep holes. So one was burrowing next to the house underneath the underneath this very um, porch, and I. Uh, I, I read online that if you put a hose down the hole, the tortoise would come out because they would think it was raining. They didn't want to be down there, so they would drown. So I put a hose down the hole. So the tortoise came out, and I was kind of standing there, and the tortoise came out and saw me and was like, oh, hell no. So it stopped <laughs> right at the edge. And then the burrow, I, I guess it's possible. So then, like, with the mud, like, the, it started caving in, and I turned the water off, and I'm like, oh, man, now there's, like, a tortoise buried there. I guess it's possible it dug out and just, like, rain and stuff washed it back in. But I think it's more likely that that tortoise was just, like, no, not going out there, and I'm just happy to, like, I don't know, die here. I don't know. I, I never, it never appeared that it came out, and it was never back around that area. So, I don't know. But it's exciting to see little ones again. Um, so, tortoise watch. so this just, the moral of the story is don't believe what you read on the internet. I, I mean, so I have a, one of the other things I read on the internet is the best way to get rid of sand spurs. Do you guys get sand spurs? They're like little... <laughs> So it's a little plant that grows up, and it, it has, like, on the end of it, as they dry out, these really spiky, sharp... Actually, it's probably one set. Oh. Yeah. So here's... Maybe. Here's a sand spur. I have one handy, because I picked one off my leg this morning. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. For those of you... Listen, oh, yeah. So it's just, like, okay. a little... And they're sharp, and um, in certain times, cer certain seasons, they're just... I mean, they're all over the place. I read on the internet that the best way to get rid of them is to um, burn them. So... <laughs> I had this fantastic blowtorch <laughs> attached to a uh, propane tank um, that um, I, when I find sand spurs, I burn them until I've burned the root. Um, and so, I mean, I just started doing it last season and I feel like there are less sand spurs, but we're also in the rainy season, so they don't have a chance to dry out and get hard and really spiky. So there may be sand spurs that are growing that I'm not seeing. I don't know. I don't know. How, like, how so, close in proximity are your neighbors to you? Like, do they see a lot of this? Pro yeah, yeah, my neighbor. Propane yeah. and burning and, and <laughs> washing away of tortoises. <laughs> I don't think anybody witnessed the washing away of tortoises except the children. <laughs> so we definitely told them that the tortoise just was like, I'm not digging a hole here anymore and yeah. went somewhere else. Uh, but the, else. yeah, my neighbor was like, yeah, let me know if that sandspur thing works, man. I might need to borrow your torch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking like the full, I don't know what it weighs, but like the like 15 pound, like, you know, propane tank, the big old thing. Like I carry yeah. that out, it's got this hose on it. The I Elon Musk like a plane floor. 
it's bigger than that, man. It's great. And you can you kick the button and it like it sounds like a jet engine. It's 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 pretty pretty fantastic. I really uh, I really enjoy um, having to get rid of sand spurs. I'd much prefer not to have sand spurs, but I was like digging them up by hand and then spraying that spot with Roundup, which didn't exactly feel great anyway, because you know, like, well, good, let's like kill everything else on the ground too. Um, but it would it would kind of keep them under control. And then I was reading like, oh, you know, lime pellets should help, but I, I don't know if I want to like throw more chemicals on the ground. It seems like burning is seems, always hey. Well, I so <laughs> <laughs> I don't can you see the can you see the, the bald spot back there in front of the pile of wood? Maybe not. I don't know. We talk so about, when the tree came down this. We do talk about like lawn and turf maintenance more so than you might anticipate. The soccer. Yeah. <laughs> soccer. <laughs> um so when the hurricane came last year and I lost a big chunk of tree, um my neighbors came over and helped me saw saw pieces of it. And um and I decided I was going to burn a lot of the remnants as opposed to driving out to the street and let the city pick it up because it takes them so long after hurricanes to like clear all the, the debris. So I have this, this patch that's about the size of a, like a picnic table on my lawn where I burned all this stuff and all the grass underneath burned and it's like slowly going back in. Not, I we have, done this we have burning smoke laws that don't allow us to, to have it. I mean, we probably fire. do too, but it's Florida. So, you know, a lot, a lot of things are flexible in Florida. <laughs> After, especially after a hurricane, like you hear people, like you hear chainsaws and you hear generators, and I don't think anybody's going to notice like a little bit of smoke coming from my backyard as I burn tree pieces. No, it's just, just a thing. What I was going to say is earlier was um, there's a Hayao Miyazaki movie called Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind, and in Nausicaa there is a toxic jungle and the way that they prevent the toxic jungle from uh, infecting the other plants because it, it throws out spores is to burn the spores when they see them uh, and burn the plants uh, so that they don't, it doesn't spread. So it Maybe does, it. it does sound reasonable uh, that you would burn an unwanted plant because of my knowledge of anime. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's like a common thing just even for like little nuisance weeds is to just hit it with like a small torch. Like I have like a little torch I've used on small weeds in the past and that, that gets rid of them for a while. Like so, kind of like a little creme brulee, like caramelizer, like that size? Yeah, yeah. It takes a bigger uh, cartridge of propane, but yeah, exactly the same thing. I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to use it on to brulee. Just, yeah. <laughs> brulee, the, the spurs. Uh. So I, I, uh, I feel like we need to know what a Dyson Sphere is so we can talk unintelligently about it some more. <laughs> intelligently. Well, I, I, I think I, my I, sphere of, of hot dog meat. <laughs> I just don't even know how you would make, I guess because in my head it, it's like a basketball size. So immediately I'm like, that's a gigantic. It's <laughs> a lot of hot dog meat. Of hot dog. It's a lot yeah, of hot dog. I, <laughs> it's a Dyson Sphere of hot dog. You just put that thing what a on the disgusting grill. Disgusting image. You, yeah, I know. You just put that thing on the grill. You cover it up, and then you just walk away for an hour. Yeah. Well, it makes. I just. Yeah. It, it would fit perfectly in one of the green egg or whatever the dome yep. type barbecues are that people yep. love. Yeah, that, that's oh that's gosh. what I'm that's what I'm thinking too. The the, the Weber sort of uh, dome. Like dribbling dome. your like meatball up to a barbecue. Like, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> You'd be the hit of any potluck <laughs> with your Dyson sphere. Right? And then you could cut it into wedges. <laughs> I, I, I was like going to say, I, it's basically like a watermelon. A meat yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. I assume it's a watermelon, right? Like, <laughs> it's a so, so like closer to the in, inner, inner portion, it's not quite as done. You know? That's why you have to leave it for an hour on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that the like inner part is actually all the way around yep. <laughs> totally blackened oh, no. well i'm having a vegetarian lunch too <laughs> <laughs> that was my that was my plan the goal has been achieved <laughs> yes he's gonna like pull like a string and a mission accomplished banner is gonna unfurl <laughs> behind him <laughs> i don't know what kind of bun situation a, a dyson sphere would no no you eat it like a watermelon like <laughs> Oh, we need to know what it is. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, why hot dog? Oh. So. Because it's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and because Dyson makes hot dogs. Dyson makes everything. Oh. Um, okay, so a Dyson sphere, and I think it's it's one of those things that's like referenced in pop culture and sci-fi, but mm -hmm. I think nobody like really it was in the Star Trek episode. So in a what episode? A Star Trek episode. Oh. Um, it's a hypothetical no. structure that encompasses a star and then captures a percentage of its power output. So the, the next generation? Mm hmm I feel like I just watched that episode recently. I, th I think you did, <laughs> but Man. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> what a, wow. What a moron. <laughs> uh, so it's basically... Yeah. It's basically, it's like a kind of a, a hypothetical that explains how once civilizations get to a certain point of um, advancement, if you want to call it that, how they can meet their energy requirements um, without just their home planet's resources. By stealing power from a star? Basically, yeah. Like by, so like by harnessing the power of like the sun or, or whatever. That is like, there's different levels as well. Stealing is a patently incorrect term to use. The, the energy cast off from the star is waste material in the, in the reactant that's happening in the star. So, I, it, like, this is like, the so, same, this is like, go ahead. So <laughs> if, if you travel to Galaxy Y and you would have no problem putting something around a star that would then absorb all the energy and potentially diffuse the amount of uh, sunlight and rays and uh, starlight uh, that it was producing for the other planets in that galaxy, uh, thereby... That's absolutely not the situation, though. The situ so so <laughs> it, if, if there are other, if there are other um, species that rely on this, then clearly... You can't utilize the power, but there are there are billions of stars that that have nothing around them that matter. They're empty rocks. So in that case, yeah. As heck, far yeah, as you so. know, as far as you know. Well, that's that's fair. I mean, I they, guess we're there could be subterranean like, reality uh, in Star Trek, and yeah, there yeah. could be subterranean so microbial terms, there animals. There could be entire ecosystems that we are not capable of seeing and aren't capable of studying because we haven't actually set foot on any of those planets. Now we're getting now we're getting into <laughs> the ethics of a hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. So well, so stealing like isn't so things. harsh. <laughs> well, and there's it, there's yeah. to to tie in with the Dyson sphere, which also there's like a Dyson belt. There's like different shapes you can like <laughs> hypothetically do this with. Dyson suspenders or <laughs> yeah, Dyson bow tie. Yeah. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> there's also something called the Kardashev scale, which is how they measure a civilization's level of like tech advancement, which I thought was interesting. Cause it's basically like, and we're obvious like it i mean I, I don't want to be like we're not doing too well but like we're not doing we're not like that high up on the scale basically well and to that end though uh the prime directive in star trek right i mean like it, it that that certainly plays into that conversation chris that like you wouldn't capture energy from a star if you would negatively impact the civilization that you were aware of regardless of where they're where they were in development you know so leave them at peace and let them do their thing and you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't negatively impact that. I think the situation. Yeah, I feel like if you're trying to discover a star and you go, oh well, there's like, you know, 16 meteors that pass this thing every 40 billion years. You know, the disruption level in this case is is pretty much nil. I, I feel like there's a lot of. I, I feel like there's a, yesterday instead of PHP. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of uh, uh, bureaucracy and politics that go into actual decision making like that, where like things just sort of get forgotten conveniently or left along the wayside. Do you like, watch Star Trek The Next Generation? <laughs> I'm that not talking no. about Star Trek. Star Trek it's, is a but, weird utopian society where everybody's nice to each other except the people that not. we're not nice to. But, <laughs> but, 
Oh. Those and guys are the bad ones, and these guys are the friendly ones, and this is a cool galaxy that has creatures that we're not going to hurt. There's nothing about, like, microbial organisms that are single-celled, and, and there's no ethics around, like, uh, annihilating an entire culture of bacteria on planet Xenod by... Uh, <laughs> by harnessing the energy of the sun that that this planet uh orbits i, I i'm not even going to entertain this conversation because I, I like i feel like you're dancing the line between reality and star trek and i squarely <laughs> and you are i squarely firmly in the line of star trek and not reality <laughs> captain's log yes yes so oh that's so funny. so Fortunately, we've reached the time of the show where we, we answer questions. So <laughs> salty today. <laughs> oh, God. If you would like us to answer one of your questions, you can ask us a question on Twitter at, at binary jazz. Nobody tweets us. Please tweet us, retweet yeah, us, or or anything. I'm very I, accessible and like I would love people to tweet us questions. It's my water cooler Twitter, so come on down. Say yeah. hello. Um, but anyway, wait, wait, if, you, if you're not, I, if you're not, does anybody use Twitter yesterday? for anything important? Does anybody no. use Twitter for anything important? So this is a great use for Twitter. Yeah, you can be the first important thing you do on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit uh, presumptive, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, or if you don't do the Twitter thing, you can go to our website uh, and fill out the form on the website, binaryjazz.us. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's a form. Or if you go to the contact page, there's also a form. And you can ask couple a things. question there. A couple things. I feel like we should start referring to the site as binaryjazz.us, not .us. I feel like we're excluding Alice in this conversation. That's true. That, and that is, that, is, that is part of the reason why I, I chose that. Uh, top level domain. Right, dot us. Dot dot us, us. Not for the dot us, dot us. And you referred to it that way from the get go. And I appreciate that. You don't speak it that way. Not a criticism, just an observation, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for the second thing. <laughs> the second point is our site is mobile accessible. So you can look at it on your phone, too. That's true. I don't know if anybody needs to say that in 2018, like our site is mobile accessible. It wasn't that long ago that. That our site was not mobile accessible, or really anywhere accessible, but that's <laughs> also something. I think the, the, the takeaway from this is that we're very accessible, and so is our website. Yes, binaryjazz.us. <clears throat> I'm happy to say our website's very accessible. I don't know if I'm accessible or not. Okay. I guess that's the, the accessor's position to determine whether I'm accessible. <laughs> Give it a try. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm accessible, maybe not. Only you can be the judge. We do have a very important uh, question that has been listener submitted uh, that we've been sitting on for almost a month now. Uh, oh. Amir, I my wallet. Amir has asked, how do you display your books at home if you have books? Do you alphabetize, arrange by color, size, topic? What are your positions on the trend of storing books with their spines to the wall so that all, oh. you see, all you see are the white edges of paper? I'm dying to find out. I'm surrounded by books and have no idea where to begin. Oh, we let Amir sit for a month with these books unorganized, potentially with the pages facing out? <laughs> this is dereliction of duty. Like, how did, how did that question sit for so long? I feel like we should have had, like, an emergency episode for that question. <laughs> so, absolutely, under no circumstances, should books be, be displayed with the pages facing out. Like, that's an accessibility faux pas right there. Like, I'm looking for a particular book. I, it's one of these <laughs> that are facing out. I, full stop at that point like you can't do that outside of that I feel like there's a lot of personal preference in how you sort your books I haven't in my life alphabetized I've also sorted by size um, our bookshelf currently um, is roughly by category um, and then within category um, it seems like closer to the easier end to get them out of with the, with the book ends is the most recently used um, so recency or category uh, and then recency um, is is how it works for us. Yeah, I, I we kind of sort of go by size too. You get you get a bookshelf and and like you've got you're, you're not gonna for... wait, you're, you're not gonna dress the elephant as far as the pages facing out. You're gonna oh, leave me hanging I, on that. I, I totally agree with that. 
Okay. I thought that was without question. Like the, the page is facing out. <laughs> I just needed affirmation on that because my word. It's not a thing. <laughs> Close. <laughs> I'm going to Google uh, that after the show and see where this is happening. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, if, if you wanted randomness in your life, um, I'm going to read a book. I don't know what it is. It's going to be this one. This is the book I'm reading. It is the Dictionary of 1942. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so you get a bookshelf um, and you have all these different sized books. You can't, sometimes you can't even do like an entire series without like changing the, the sh size of the shelves if you didn't get the book at the same time or in the same printing or whatever. Um, so, so size is definitely important. Um, uh, so that's probably the first criteria is like things that are of a similar size and then it's like things that are sort of of a similar ilk, but also we generally like try to put series together and series by the same author together, sort of lump it to all the Rowling is together and all the Rangers uh, Apprentice books are all together. And, um, and then it's like vaguely genre based, like this is kind of the fantasy area and this is kind of the science fiction-y area. And, yeah. Let me, let me ask one thing real quick. That's really are the only two books, categories, by the way. It's just fantasy and science fiction. That's it. <laughs> are all your books, like, do you have just a bookshelf, like the canonical bookshelf in your house? Or do you, no. like, we have our bookshelf, and then the kids have bookshelves, and I've got another shelf I have some books on in the, in the bedroom. Rhonda has a shelf with some books. Like, we have books in a lot of places. We have two big, like, eight-foot IKEA bookshelves in a sort of sitting room. And then... The kids each have two smaller, um, what are they? I want to say they're Calax uh, bookshelves that are about like, I don't know, this high. About, what is that? Four feet, five feet, something? Not five feet. I, never make it, I have no idea how tall you are. So <laughs> He's eight foot five. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's closer to six then when you put your I'm one. Down. I'm 1 1.2 parbs. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they're about four feet, so the kids have their own bookshelves in their room, and then um, we have a really tall uh, bookshelf in our room, uh, and then we have a separate bookshelf uh, that's the same thing the kids have that we have, like, cookbooks on. Um, yeah. And then I've got a few books, mostly graphic novels uh, and the stuff that Erin didn't want in the bedroom because she doesn't like it, uh, in my office. Um, what I... Since we have less than a minute left, mm -hmm. I want to explore one problem I have. Mm -hmm. um, there are occasionally books that you receive as a gift that are just not a book for you, right? How, it, I find it insanely difficult to to get rid of those books or any book really that I've acquired in some way. It's just not not a book that I need, you know, not something I'll ever refer to again. Aaron it's has like no I, problem just tossing those in the in the give to a secondhand store pile. I. I yeah, I mean, and that's what you need to do with them. But gosh, even then, it's like, it, it's, I don't know. There's, there's I mean, an honor could, in the written word, be, I feel, even you when the words are done. It. it could be the gift that keeps on giving. You could just give it to someone else. Just pass the buck. I probably need to, like, mark the inside to make sure I don't get it back. <laughs> or put it in one of those. I don't know if you have little libraries around yeah. where you are, but yeah. that's always fun. If, if they are around, that's yeah. definitely a good thing. Squirrel House slash Little Library. Yes. This is it. This, these, are, this, these are just the bookshelves. There's no, no more. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> it's true. So what do you? So, how, how does Kindle play into your life? Um, pretty well. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you see, you have a bunch of like eBooks. Yeah, I don't have a Kindle. I have a Kobo because it's Canadian. <laughs> um, oh. And it works with our library, which is key because I can't. That's be, awesome. I read too much to buy books. Um, I would, I would eat. I would wouldn't be able to afford rent. <laughs> so. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.